the Shox Open Run headphones are bone conducting headphones that allow you to listen to music, podcasts, or an audiobook while still being able to hear everything happening around you making them ideal for us runners and cyclists. In this video, I'll be reviewing the headphones and sharing my experience using them for the last month. So let's jump straight in with what many consider to be one of the most important factors when it comes to headphones, audio quality. Now, I will preface this and say I'm not an audiophile or anything like that. For me, as long as I can hear it and it sounds half decent, I'm happy. In fact, I'm not really into music much at all, so I won't be able to tell you what the bass is like or distortion or anything like that, but I don't really think that's what shocks are going for here. The main purpose behind bone conducting headphones is being able to listen to something playing whilst also being able to hear what's going on around you, be it someone talking or cars on the road. That being said, I have been pleased with the audio quality and can't really tell much difference when I compare them to my AirPods Pro. I found it really easy to hear what was playing whilst also being able to hear my surroundings. I remember one day when I was out for a run and I had some music playing relatively loudly, but I could still hear a car approaching from behind that I reckon was a good 70 meters away. It's really quite a strange sensation, especially if you haven't used bone conducting headphones before, but you do get used to it really quickly. You can't hear as well when it is particularly windy, but again, it's ultimately more important being able to hear everything around you. When it comes to what you would actually listen to, I personally will only listen to music for something in the background to keep that bit of my brain occupied, rather than try to listen to something like a podcast or an audio book where I need to pay more attention to what's actually being said. In terms of comfort, I have found them to be very comfortable when wearing them and you almost forget that you have them on after a while. What I will say is that the sides of your head around your temple can feel a little bit odd once you've taken them off if you've had them on for a while. In one case, I had them on for a 50 minute run and they felt fine, but as soon as I took them off, I felt a little bit of pressure around where they sit for a good five to 10 minutes. I don't think it's anything to worry about and it's not like you can even adjust how tight they fit on your head, but it was definitely something I noticed on more than one occasion. It wasn't a particularly nice feeling, but certainly won't put me off from using them, especially as the feeling goes after a short while and it doesn't seem to happen after every use. Now you've probably noticed that I have quite a big head, so I was a bit worried that they wouldn't fit me, but that has definitely not been a problem. The headphones are rigid in some places whilst also being flexible, so them not fitting isn't something you have to worry about at all. I went with the standard size, but there is also a mini version available. Shocks provide a really helpful size guide on their site if you're unsure which will best fit you. They also stay in place really well. I jumped around and shook my head with them on as part of my testing and they didn't budge at all. The headphones are pretty basic in that all that comes in the package are the headphones themselves, a charging cable, and a really nice quality pouch to store everything in. There are only a few buttons on the headphones, one larger one on the left and two smaller ones on the right near to the charging port. The button on the left is multi-purpose in that you can pause what you're listening to or skip tracks depending on how many times the button is pressed. The two buttons on the right are used to control the volume with the volume up button also acting as the power button so you hold it down to power the headphones on or off. Whilst talking about the buttons themselves, I personally found the left one a little bit awkward to use and that it was tricky to register a double press. A single press to play or pause was fine, but I often found my second press to skip a track to not register and I just end up pausing the music. I don't think this is a design flaw or anything like that and it just takes a little bit of practice. I did find that a very brief pause is needed in between presses to register the second press, so something worth bearing in mind. The two volume control buttons are easy to use whilst running with the volume up button being a bit more textured so you can tell it apart. I did think they would be a bit awkward to get to, especially if you try and press them whilst you're actually out running, but they turned out to be really easy to use once you know where they are. The volume up button is also used to power on and off the headphones, and I will say how pleasantly surprised I was at how quick they powered on and connected to my phone. I did expect the Bluetooth connection to be a bit flaky and need to be set up several times, but it has remained rock solid ever since I first paired them. I power the headphones on and immediately get told they're connected to my phone. So really nice feature there. I will say that although the buttons are relatively easy to get to whilst out running, cycling is a bit of a different story for me. I'll be honest and say that my balance on the bike isn't the best, so you may well be different, but I've just accepted the fact that I won't realistically be able to access the buttons whilst riding, especially with a helmet on. The battery alerts say how much charge is left when powering them on is a really nice addition. The headphones will say whether the battery is at high, medium, low, or needs charging. One small thing that shops could do to make this even better would be to give you the same alert again when you power them off. 
as it could be that the last time you use them is enough for the battery to almost drain completely, but you wouldn't know this until you came to use them again, by which time it may be too late. In terms of the battery life itself, I found it to be pretty spot on when comparing it to what shocks quote, during my testing, I recorded how long I had the headphones powered on for and then added these times up when the alert told me that the battery was low. I got just over eight hours, which is exactly what shocks quote the battery life to be. At this point, I charged them up rather than see how much more use I could get out of them before the battery died completely, but I can't imagine it would be too long. When it comes to charging the headphones, you have to use the proprietary magnetic charger that comes with it and connect it up to a USB port. I didn't time how long it took to fully charge, but it wasn't very long at all, and it was helpful to see a charging indicator light. If the light was red, the battery was still charging. If the light was blue, it was fully charged. Shocks say that a full charge will take between 60 and 90 minutes, so not too bad at all. Something I will say on this topic is that you need to remember to actually turn the headphones off once you finish using them. As I'm also using AirPods, I'm used to just taking them out of my ears and popping them back into the case knowing that whatever I'm listening to will automatically stop playing and the connection with the AirPods will drop. I made this mistake once and only realized when I was trying to play something on my phone after wearing the shocks for a run and I couldn't hear anything. When I checked the Bluetooth settings on my phone, I saw it was still connected and could hear it playing when I put the headphones back on. So if you're like me and used to how seamless AirPods connect, don't forget to turn the headphones off afterwards by holding down the volume up button until you hear the very nice lady say that they're powering off. Overall, I've been very pleased with the Shox Open Run headphones and will definitely continue to use them. They are a solid bit of kit that sound good, connect seamlessly and are really comfortable to wear. That bit of pressure I feel after taking them off is a little bit disappointing, but it won't put me off from using them, especially as the feeling does disappear after a few minutes. I think there are definitely some things that Shox could do to improve them further, like including the battery alert when powering the headphones off. But for the price, I think they are good value for money. At the time of recording this video, they retail for £130. So I hope you found this one helpful. If you did, you might want to check out this video here on screen where I review a boot dryer designed to quickly and efficiently dry out your wet trainers. Perfect for those cold winter months. Please consider dropping the video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.